back to the gradex academy guys today we are going to discuss about the interview question that is been asked to the one of the student of gradex academy in the company for tcs so uh, the interview questions are about the salesforce admin and development role and this uh, person have nearly 3.5 years of experience so let's review the question answers so today's video is about the trigger interview question which are asked in the TCS. Now let's move to the questions guys. Uh, let me just show you the question. So the first question is uh, can you temporarily disable the trigger? If yes, how would you do it? So basically we can we can uh, we can definitely uh, definitely disable the trigger by making it inactive. Uh, we can just go to the custom settings or custom metadata to execute the logic or we can just make uh, just open the uh, open the trigger and just inactivate it if multiple trigger exist in the same object then uh, how is the order of execution is determined so basically if multiple triggers are uh, written on the same object uh, we cannot return means we cannot write multiple trigger but if we write uh, then we can control it uh, by using uh, before and after events. But uh, if if the trigger, if one trigger have a before uh, event, then uh, it will be executed first. If trigger have the after event, that event will uh, execute it later. But there is no such uh, means uh, no such determination principle given in the uh, in the Salesforce. The third question is, what are the different types of triggers in the Salesforce? So there are two types of trigger, as we all know, before trigger and after trigger. Uh, when you should use before and when you should use after. So basically, if uh, the trigger we want to run before DML, then we use a before. And if we wanted to run the trigger after data committed to the database, then we will write after trigger. What is the best approach to test the trigger, right? We can write a test uh, scenarios, right? We can write the test cases and we can create a test class, right? And uh, we can create Apex class by using at the rate is test annotation. And then we can uh, we can test it and we can get a, a desired code coverage, right? Depending on the scenarios and what is uh, what code is covering. Next is uh, how to prevent recursion in the trigger. We can use a static Boolean variables to uh, in the helper class to just uh, prevent the recursion. Uh, next, uh, we have what is the uh, what is a trigger handler pattern and why it is important, right? So specific logic we actually write into a classes and we call that class is. Uh, we call that class as a trigger handler class. Basically trigger are actually Apex program, which actually gets executed before or after DML. But usually, right, uh, we can write logic inside the trigger also, but we cannot write because uh, best practices says that a trigger has uh, not capability of, uh, of uh, generating a logic or executing a logic, right? Instead, what we can do, we can just write down the handler class. We can write down the simple class, simple Apex class, which will handle all the logical requirement. And uh, hence, we can say that uh, we, can, we can improve the reusability, readability, and testability of the trigger, uh, trigger logic. Next is, uh, can a trigger perform DML operation? Uh, if yes, so what are the best practices? Uh, so basically, uh, we can perform the uh, DML operations inside the trigger, uh, but uh, we, we actually avoid using DMS inside the loops, right? And uh, we, we make sure that keep, uh, DMLs are bulkified because if it is not, then it will reach a governing limit. Next is what are the context variables in the trigger and how they uh, are helpful. So basically context variables are the system defined variables, which actually uh, gives us a data about the uh, DML, which is executing the trigger. Uh, there are more than 13 uh, trigger context variables, right? Majorly we use <clears throat> 
trigger dot new trigger dot old trigger dot new map trigger dot old map then uh, we use some uh, dml context variables like uh, is insert is update is delete is undelete and we have a event specific uh, uh, trigger context variable also is uh, is after and is before so there are lots of trigger context variables you uh, we can explain it to the interviewer now next is how do you write a bulkified trigger to handle the large data volume so basically we use a collections like list set and maps to avoid uh, dmls and isoqls inside uh, the loops right and uh, we actually bulkify the dml right we actually fetch the data uh, in uh, by using in operator right by placing uh, the all data all required criteria into a set okay now next is uh, next is uh, we have uh, what what is the complete order of execution when record is saved so basically the order of in the order of execution uh, we have nearly 20 parameters uh, occur right and uh, it includes first validation then before trigger after trigger then workflow rules then process escalation rules roll up summary updates and finally the data will be committed to the database okay so this is the this is the order of execution i have created one more video on the order of execution you can refer it uh, with the gradex academy's channel that will show you the brief about 20 steps which actually executed in the order of execution in salesforce now next is how can a trigger call a future method how can a trigger call a future method and when you should uh, use it so basically future uh, future means basically future method can be called uh, in a after trigger for the asynchronous operations like callouts and all generally future methods have a future annotation and future method runs a, a parallelly right it runs a parallel execution uh, so we usually do not use future method before the dml we we actually use it in the after trigger only okay now uh, next is uh, next is uh, what are uh, what are the major limitation of apex trigger <clears throat> So major limitation of the Apex trigger is the governing limits, basically, right? We have governing limits for the SOQL as well as uh, DMLs, right? Also, the uh, sometimes uh, trigger limits uh, itself uh, towards the recursion. So recursion is also a major limitation into a uh, Apex trigger. And we have a complex debugging system. There is no default debugging in the Apex trigger. So we can say that complex debugging is also a limitation of the uh, Apex trigger. Now, how does uh, how does the add error method works in the uh, in the trigger? So add error methods actually uh, gives the custom error um, on the field or the record. Uh, after that, we have uh, we have is uh, is it advisable to use SOQL and DML inside the trigger? what are the best practices actually uh, we use uh, dml as well as soql inside the trigger but best practice is to just bulkify it right we actually don't use soql and dml inside the loop just avoid the loop and just bulkify it and then use it okay uh, last is can one uh, trigger invoked another trigger if yes how so basically uh, Yes, uh, we can say that one trigger can invoke another trigger, but uh, not directly, right? Through the DML. How? So if one trigger has another DML written inside uh, that particular trigger, that will uh, that will uh, actually creating or uh, or running the another trigger. We can say that one trigger can invoke another trigger. In this way, one trigger execution is causing another trigger's uh, execution. And uh, we can say that one trigger can invoke another trigger. What are the key difference between Apex trigger and Salesforce flows? So basically, uh, Apex triggers are uh, the Apex programs and flows are declarative tool. That means we first declare everything there and apex uh, triggers are the code 
use uh, uses if we think about the uses of flows and uh, trigger right we can say that uh, flows uh, we can use flows for the simple uh, no code automation but if we have a complex requirement which cannot be fulfilled by the flow then trigger can be definitely solved that that means uh, over the flow we can use trigger right but in other in some organizations uh, means uh, uh, some technical architects prefer flows uh, instead of triggers why because uh, they feel that ki salesforce is actually promoting flows and a trigger will actually a uh, trigger will actually complicate everything and flows is no code so that's why we can say that uh, uh, we can say that flows and uh, apex triggers are used for the same purpose of automation so these are the 18 question guys uh, which are asked in the uh, in the particular uh, uh, salesforce developers 3.5 years experience uh, interview in the tcs if you wanted uh, the answer keys for that this particular uh, interview uh, you can just comment on my channel and uh, you can uh, you will be getting an answer key in the pdf format with the proper proper answer for the each and every question and if you want uh, more videos like this to be created by me then just uh, just comment and motivate me